Hey everyone, it's Congressman Jamie Raskin for my favorite time of the week, Local Hero, and we get to recognize the people who are making life better for all of us in Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District. Our local hero is my friend Dan Langenkamp, um, who is an 8th District resident. He served in the State Department for two decades in six different international postings. At the time of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, he was spokesman and press attaché for the U.S. Embassy in Kiev and worked at the Poland uh, Ukraine border for many months with uh, a small team of diplomats and with his wife, Sarah Depping Legenkamp. And they came back to America uh, after that. And then tragedy struck in August of 2022 when Sarah Depping Legenkamp, also a diplomat in the Foreign Service in the State Department, was struck and killed in um, Montgomery County on her bicycle in an accident. Uh, Dan has worked since the day Sarah was killed for serious legislative solutions for cyclist and pedestrian safety. Last week, Maryland Governor Westmore signed into law the Sarah Deving Langenkamp Memorial Act, legislation that would impose the same criminal penalties for hitting a bicyclist in a bike lane as for hitting a pedestrian or a cyclist in a crosswalk. Mr. Langenkamp lives with his two sons, Oliver and Axel in Bethesda. Dan, thank you for your tremendous advocacy on behalf of bike safety in Sarah's memory. And thank you for being our local hero this week. Thank you. And thank you for recognizing Sarah. You know, this is all, really all about making sure that she didn't lose her life in vain, really. Tell us about the new law um, that the governor just um, signed, um, how it works and how is it going to help us to get Marylanders to drive more carefully? Yeah, well, it resulted from the, the trial for the driver that killed Sarah. After that happened, the state attorney's office um, said to me, you know, we agree with you uh, that the, the penalties for drivers who uh, strike cyclists are too low. The, the driver received a penalty of just um, 150 hours of community service and a uh, six month suspension of his license and a $2,000 fine, which everybody agreed was, doesn't, didn't make sense when, you, when we're talking about uh, taking a life. So we worked to get something together and uh, this bill that simply just extends the same protections that exist for crosswalks to all of the shoulders and bike lanes in the state was the solution. It's a moderate solution. And um, I'm so glad that we're talking today because it gives me a chance, gives us a chance to talk about to talk to drivers about why they need to be safe on our roads. Really, the, the important step right now is education for people in the state to understand that there's a lot of vulnerable road users out there and we need to drive carefully to protect them. Well, we owe a debt of gratitude to you, to Governor Moore, to Delegate Sarah Love from District 16 for her leadership in making all of this happen. I know you've also been involved in making sure there's progress in redesigning River Road to make it safer, um, which is where Sarah was lost. Tell us how that's going. Yeah, you know, so River Road is a classic um, artery, you know, the, and that was built in the, you know, the 50s, 60s um, to just funnel as many people through um, that section of town as quickly as possible without much thought for the safety implications of that. And she is a consequence of that kind of design so I'm working with the state to try to get that portion of road redesigned so that it has a separated bike path or, or multi-use path that keeps the pedestrians safe. You know, right now there's a Whole Foods there, there's all kinds of retail there, all kinds of people, you know, with children and mothers like Sarah, it needs to be a safe part of the road. Um, not much progress yet, I have to say, but I really wanna push and work with the DOT to make sure that that's a safer place now for everybody. Well, and thank you for your commitment to that, too. Um, when um, tragedy struck um, and uh, I first got to meet you and your wonderful, beautiful family, um, we also talked about introducing federal legislation um, in Sarah's name. And I did introduce with Representative Earl Blumenauer the Sarah Demick Langenkamp Active Transportation Safety Act. Um, and 
this will unlock in different ways federal funding from the Highway Safety Improvement Program for projects that connect uh, bike safety infrastructure in lanes, and it allows local governments to identify different transportation projects that would be eligible for funding that would assist in bike lanes. But um, I mean, tell us what you think the critical importance is of making this not just a local and state matter, but also a federal priority. Yeah, you know, it will unlock funds for local communities who, you know, right now have to choose between building a library or funding the firemen uh, and a bike lane. And so uh, by eliminating the matching funds that are necessary, it gives states um, a lot more flexibility. And, you know, we faced more pedestrian deaths and bicyclist deaths than we've seen in decades last year. Um, a thousand cyclists around the country, seven thousand pedestrians, and overall on our roads, more than forty-four thousand people died on our roads, which I think we all can agree is just too much. Um, it's what you know, Pete Buttigieg, the transportation secretary, says is a crisis on America's roadways. So this bill would be a step towards you know turning this around and actually making America safer by giving communities access to these federal monies that are available for highway money, you know, uh, that that is about six billion, eight billion dollars a year. It's a large pot of funds. Uh, so it could really be a game changer. And we have 60 um, co-signatories in the House. We just introduced it in the Senate. So really look forward to continuing to work to make that bill a reality. And it uh, is part of a very necessary process of us investing nationally in the bike infrastructure throughout the states and the localities. Um, well, um, thank you so much for your leadership on all of these things. It's really a testament to what um, a citizen um, and a family can do uh, in converting the the crisis and the trauma of a loss like that into service to the broader community. And um, uh, how's everybody in your family doing, Dan? And is this something that helps people deal with this um, unthinkable loss? You know, we're, um, thanks for asking. We're, we're, we're doing okay. The, the boys are playing soccer and learning French and playing piano. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, they're doing well. Uh, though something like this just changes everything about your family, you know, um, it's, uh, you know, the, it, it's, it's hard to explain how just not having a person around that was here and was such an important part of your life, uh, what that's like. It, it just, uh, you know, there is, I have to admit, there's a sadness that hangs over the house. Um, and while we're doing well, you know, it's, 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 it feels like a little bit like we're, we're getting by, you know, it's, 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 it's not what it should be. It's not. Well, what it should be. Um, I know a little bit of how you feel, dear man. Um, send our love to Oliver and Axel. Please accept the appreciation, the gratitude, and the love of a grateful Montgomery County for what you're doing to make the roads safer for everybody. Um, in the name of your beloved wife, Sarah. And uh, thank you for being our local hero. Thank you so much, Representative Raskin. It's a, a, a real honor and pleasure to be here. Thank you so much.